Hey, thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. A nostalgic look back at my favorite Rangers from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm your host, Tom Browning. Thanks for listening. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to the second episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. I'm your host, Tom Browning. Thanks once again for pressing play. Uh, It's a great honor for me to highlight on this particular podcast the great number 19 of the New York Rangers, Jean Rattel. Jean Rattel quite possibly could be not only the greatest homegrown center iceman in New York Rangers history, he could quite possibly be the greatest homegrown athlete, hockey player in New York Rangers history. Uh, This hockey, uh, this podcast, is especially timely because later on this year, I believe it's February the 25th, the New York Rangers will finally be recognizing Jean Rattel having his night at the Garden, retiring his number 19 and lifting it up the rafters to be with the other great Rangers of all time, the Eddie Jockamans, the Roger Bears, the Andy Bathgates, Mark Messiers, and Adam Graves. It's been a long time since Jean Rattel played for the New York Rangers, but I remember when as a kid back in the 60s and 70s watching Jean Rattel listening to Marv Albert on the radio do the play-by-play of the New York Rangers and describing the awesome game that Jean Rattel brought to the ice each and every night. Jean Rattel was a tall, rangy player by yesterday's standards. About six foot one, 175, 180 pounds. He was a very elegant player, uh, not very physical, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but he had all the skill sets. He could skate. He was shifty. He could dish the puck, feed the puck, and he can shoot. He had a terrific wrist shot. He had a nose for the net. He was a gentlemanly player. He played by the rules. He never took an advantage of an opponent. Just a class player. He he garnered, he, he earned the respect of every single player that he played against. Even against the rough physical teams that uh, ordinarily would uh, come and uh, dominate the New York Rangers back in the day, like the Philadelphia Flyers and Boston Bruins, Jean Rattel was a player's player. He commanded a tremendous amount of respect and played with the respect that the game really deserved. And like I said, once again, it's a very timely podcast because after all these years of being out of the limelight in New York, he's finally going to have his due at Madison Square Garden. I just want to go over some of Jean Rattel's background, where he came from. Uh, Jean Rattel was born in a small city 300 miles north of Quebec. Uh, and the funny thing is, he, be cra- he, he became friends with Roger Bear, uh, his teammate for many, many years with the Rangers, way back when he was about 12 years old. As a matter of fact, um, Jean Rattel and Roger Bear went to the same boarding school together up in Canada. They met when they were 12 years old. They played peewee hockey together. They played junior hockey together. They played minor league hockey together in the New York Rangers system. And then, of course, they finally became teammates with the big club wearing the red, white, and blue of the New York Rangers. And they formed two-thirds of one of the greatest hockey first lines in hockey history, and that is the gag line, the GAG or the goal a game line uh, with Vic Hatfield at left wing, Jean Rattel at center, and Roger Bear at right wing. But Jean Rattel came up, as I mentioned to you before, in the early 60s. His first four seasons, uh, he was bounced back and forth from the Rangers Baltimore minor league uh, affiliate and the big club. As a matter of fact, in his first two uh, National Hockey League games, he actually scored his first two goals. The first uh, goal against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and uh, in his second game back in 1961, he scored uh, his second goal in his career. So how many National Hockey League players can say that they scored two goals in their very first two games? But again, he was bounced back and forth his first four years. And the reason for that was because the National, the New York Rangers brass, they were hoping that he could bring a little bit more, a little bit more grit to the team. They wanted him to become a little bit more aggressive, just bring a little bit more sand, sandpaper to his game. And as Jean Rattel goes on to say many, many times throughout his career and in his retirement, that just was not his game. He was not, by his own admission, a very physical hockey player. And you'll see throughout his career that he really depended upon power forwards on his way to really uh, generate the type of offense and to really bring to the ice the skill set that Jean Rattel was known for. As a matter of fact, uh, Jean Rattel blossomed as a 40-goal scorer with the New York Rangers when they put Vic Hatfield on his wing. Now, Vic Hatfield, when he first came up with the New York Rangers, he was the epitome, the personification of the power forward back that, that you would see back in the late 60s, early 70s. A rugged, physical left winger, 
And the, the irony is is that as Vic Caffield became more accomplished in his own right as a goal scorer, he became less and less of a physical presence. He relied more on goal scoring and skill than he did uh, playing a tough, hard physical physical game. And I always thought that uh, that really uh, undermined the New York Rangers' success in the 70s in their quest to win the Stanley Cup. So with that said, despite the fact that uh, in the end, the the New York Rangers' gag line was not a very physical line, they were an extremely skilled uh, line, and they played 10 years together. And some folks feel that those 10 years together uh, made for the longest tenured number one hockey line in NHL history. Vic Catfield. John Rattel, Roger Bear, number 11, number 19, and number 7, playing side by side. As I mentioned to you before, Roger Bear and John Rattel went to boarding school together in Quebec. And the story has it that uh, Roger Bear made a promise to John Rattel that they would always be together playing hockey on the same line. And when they were at the boarding school together, the story has it that they would used to uh, play keep away with the puck uh, against the other 35 or 40 kids in their class. <laughs> and... Um, uh, that was quite a scene that uh, the kids could not, the other classmates just could not get the puck away from Roger Bear and Jean Rattel. And they took those those same skill sets with them to the Rangers junior hockey team, the Rangers minor league team, and then, of course, during Jean's long and illustrious 15-year career with the New York Rangers. Probably the, the year that I remember the most regarding Jean Rattel was the 1972 season where the Rangers were dominating the National Hockey League. They were really blowing teams away. They had an incredible home record. They were very tough to beat on the road as well. And that was the season that um, epitomized really the New York Rangers' history in a nutshell. They were leading the National Hockey League. Uh, Jean Rattel, Roger Bear, and Vic Catfield had the chance to all score 50 goals during that one season. And with typical Ranger luck, as it would have it, with 16 games to go, teammate Dale Rolfe took a shot from the point that broke the ankle of Dale Rolfe, uh, excuse me, that broke the ankle of Jean Rattel during a game with the California Golden Seals. And I remember listening to this game vividly and having Marv Albert describe the just the mood of the crowd when Jean Rattel went down in a heap and having his teammates help him off the ice into the dressing room how the air went totally out of the garden that particular night because obviously the Rangers were odds on favorite to win the Stanley Cup and that was the year that they were going to bring the cup home for the first time since 1940 they were working on all cylinders Brad Park was having an incredible year the tandem of Eddie Jockerman and Jill Villamy and goal was having a Vezina type trophy type season. They had the gag line going. They had the bulldog line of Davey Belan, Walt Kachuk, and Billy Fairburn. They had great checking players and Pete Stemkowski and a power point uh, power play specialist and Bobby Rousseau and another defensive specialist and Bruce McGregor. They had some tough wingers and Teddy Irvin. They had a very formidable team. And again, the three three of them, Hatfield, Vertel, and Gilbert had a chance to all score 50 goals. But as again, as luck would have it, Vertel broke his ankle. Rod Gilbert hurt his I believe he broke his thumb a few games later. And Vic Caffield wound up being the only Ranger player to score 50 goals that particular year. Now, despite Jean Rattel being hurt, he still had 46 goals, 109 points. He won the MVP of the National Hockey League that year. And he was able to make it back for the playoffs. But the Rangers and Jean Rattel were not the same team. Jean Rattel had a tough time getting back to being the same player he was during the regular season. And rightly so. He was still coming off a very severe injury. And as it turns out, the New York Rangers succumbed to the Boston Bruins in six games in the Stanley Cup Finals in 1972. Now, Jean Rattel wound up being traded in 1975 to the Boston Bruins. In the 75 season, the 74-75 season, the Rangers were upset by the New York Islanders in the playoffs. And the understanding was that some big changes were going to be taking place at Madison Square Garden. You just don't lose to the younger brother on Long Island in only the third year of existence and expect to not see any changes. And what happened was the Rangers got off to a very, very slow start in the 1975-76 season. And Emil Francis was compelled to make some changes. And he pulled off a blockbuster trade with the hated rival Boston Bruins in the 1975-76 season. A blockbuster trade sending Brad Park, Joe Zanuzzi, and John Rattel to the hated Bruins for Carol Vadney and Phil Esposito. Now it took um, Esposito 
Zito a little time to get going with the Rangers. Ken Hodge never got it going with the New York Rangers. But John Rattel didn't miss a beat. John Rattel and Brad Park stepped right into that Bruin lineup, and they become they became formidable Stanley Cup contenders for the next six seasons. John Rattel played six seasons with the Boston Bruins, and he had an incredible impact on that organization. As a matter of fact, Jean Rattel and Brad Park led the Boston Bruins to two consecutive Stanley Cup Finals in 77 and 78 against their hated rivals, the Montreal Canadiens. And as you NHL buffs know, no team has met, has met more often in the playoffs than the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens. And the Boston Bruins lost two consecutive heartbreaking Stanley Cup Finals to the Montreal Canadiens. And Jean Rattel was right in the middle of of it. And Jean Rattel, as great as he was during the regular season with the New York Rangers, he really struggled during the playoffs. If you look at Jean Rattel's playoff numbers, they are not the most robust scoring numbers in the playoffs. But when he went to the Boston Bruins, he not only had robust regular season numbers, but he had very impressive playoff numbers. And I believe the reason for that was because he was surrounded with the Boston Bruins with a very rugged physical hockey team. And everybody knows who follows the National Hockey League that when the playoffs start, time and space becomes negligible. You really have to fight for every inch of ice during the playoffs. And it's always the physical teams, the teams with the most physical depth, the teams that have the most depth when it comes to playing rock'em sock'em hockey, physical hockey, those are the teams that combined with skill and great goaltending will win the Stanley Cup. And the Boston Bruins had all of that. They had not just one rugged winger to protect Jean Martel. They had a team of robust players and Jean Martel fit right in. He had a tremendous amount of time and space created for him by his teammates, giving him the time and space that he needed to be not only a formidable regular season player, but a formidable player playoff player. So Jean Rattel played 21 seasons in the National Hockey League. 15 with the Rangers, 6 with the Boston Bruins. He had a tremendous track record. He was inducted into the National Hockey League Hall of Fame in 1985. He was voted the New York Rangers Players Player Award four consecutive times. He was nominated for the Lady Bing Trophy nine times, won it twice. And everybody knows the Lady Bing Trophy is for the most gentlemanly player in the National Hockey League. Nine times Jean Rattel was nominated twice he won the award. Again, he was uh, uh, elected to the Hall of Fame in 1985. He led the Rangers in scoring from 1968 to 1973. Just an elegant player. He was the Rangers' Jean Beliveau when he played for the Rangers from 1960 all the way to 1975. It was a very tough day when he and Brad Park were traded. As a Ranger fan, I can tell you when he, they were traded to the Boston Bruins, it was a tough nut to swallow. But it did wonders for Jean Rattel's career. Not only did he go on and have six very good seasons with the Boston Bruins, but he later became an assistant coach with the Bruins, a scout for the Boston Bruins. He was actually with the Boston Bruins for over 23 years. And during his time as a scout with the Boston Bruins, Jeff Gorton, who is now the Rangers general manager, was uh, in the front office with the Bruins. I believe he was assistant general manager at the time. And now with Jeff Gordon as the GM of the New York Rangers, he saw fit to finally bring number 19 home to have his own special night this coming February at Madison Square Garden. So it was a real pleasure watching Jean Martel play. He formed one-third of the goal of game line with Vic Hatfield and Roger Bear, one of the greatest hockey lines in NHL history. It was an honor watching him play. I will be very, very eager to witness the night in February when they finally lift number 19 to the rafters. Jean Martel, it's been a long time coming. Rangers, you finally did the right thing in recognizing Jean Martel, who I think was probably the greatest homegrown New York Ranger to ever play. And that concludes my podcast. The ability to discuss and look back at one of the greatest hockey players of all time, number 19, Jean Rattel. Thank you for listening. This has been a Go Tommy Boy production.